Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Julia Lechner Leslie, and I am the Director of Cross Systems Integration at Community Behavioral Health. I have responsibility for our school based liaison team, who many of you and your school leadership have worked with in the past. I'm going to allow Lori Pastor to introduce herself as well, and then we will get started. Good afternoon, my name is Lori Pastor and I am the clinical coordinator at CBH um, for the school-based team. And we have a staff of school-based liaisons um, and a supervisor as well that help to support the work in schools. So the purpose of this session is to give you a foundational understanding of intensive behavioral health services or IBHS, what you can expect in your schools and how the district and CBH partner, CBH partner to support these efforts. On October 19th, 2019, OMSAS promulgated chapters 1155 and 5240, which created new regulations for IBHS and signaled the end of BHRS regulations. IBHS regulations will now govern everything we previously referred to as wraparound or community-based services, including BHRS, STS, ABA, early childhood programs, and most of the BHRS program exceptions. IBHS is, is, was formulated to integrate treatment across school, home, and community with a consistent provider to maximize progress. We will now go over our CBH continuum of care. So the current landscape of services is uh, through the following um, order, organizational order. The DBH IDS, which is the Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services, oversees CBH. CBH contract, I'm sorry, DBH IDS contracts with CBH as its behavioral health managed care organization to oversee the continuum of Medicaid funded behavioral health services throughout Philadelphia for individuals of all ages. CBH is a 501c3 behavioral health managed care organization and we are responsible for the administration of health choices, managing delivery of behavioral health services for Medicaid recipients who reside in Philadelphia County. CBH has had long-standing partnerships and presence in our Philadelphia schools. In collaboration with DBH IDS, CBH has created or expanded the following services. Evidence-based therapeutic practices, trauma treatment across the city, a children's crisis continuum. We have expanded family-based services and the behavioral health transformation for what we will discuss regarding IBHS. CBH also co-designed and funded STEP, the Support Team for Education Partnerships, which is an innovative school-based behavioral health program in partnership with the School District of Philadelphia and the Mayor's Managing Director's Office. CBH contracts with various providers within our network. Our service expectations for our providers are as follows. Services need to be medically necessary, delivered in the least restrictive environment, developmentally appropriate, 
culturally and linguistically competent, individualized and self-centered, strength and resiliency based, trauma informed, and very important, we want to ensure we are incorporating youth and family voice and choice in the services that we provide. CBH has a specialized school-based team that was created to support and promote effective provider and school team relationships. Our team ensures providers have the skills and the tools to build relationships and integrate within school teams, conduct provider and school district training. Our team would like to help problem solve and support structural processes that allow the clinical work to happen in our schools. We want to ensure that there are provider meetings and forums where we work together and collaborate regarding services in schools, monitoring expectations of service delivery in our schools, partnering with the School District of Philadelphia's prevention and intervention team, and problem-solving challenges with our collaborative partners. Our school-based team's mission is to promote care coordination through partnerships. Our vision is building and nurturing collaborative relationships to foster successful treatment for every child and family. And our goal is to ensure providers have the skills and the tools to establish relationships with schools and effectively integrate into the school team. The following continuum of a care is available to all children and families in Philadelphia. If you look at our continuum of care, if you look across the top, you will notice that services can be provided from infant infancy through young adulthood. I do want to add that there is also an adult continuum of care, so adults can receive services as well. But for the purposes of this presentation, we will focus on children's services only. If you look down the left-hand side of this continuum of care that's color-coordinated, you will see that our services range from prevention services, which is the light gray box, all the way down through acute services, which is the red box at the end. Of course, we would like to keep our children in their families, in their family home, community, and schools. So we like to concentrate services to be available for children within the community. If you look and focus on the green section of this continuum of care, you will notice that the green is community-based child and family treatment services. This is where IBHS, or Intensive Behavioral Health Services, lives. Also available in the community are any outpatient services, individual, family, group, medication management, therapeutic school, summer and after school programs, early childhood treatment programs, long-term partial, and all of our family services, which include family-based services, functional family therapy, multi-systemic therapy for problem sexual behaviors, and FICAPS, which is a very specialized family-based team for children who have had multiple hospitalizations. But you can see here that if we are or aim at our services at treating the child in the community, we would like our families and children to utilize those services and supports that are available in the community. Because once we look at either the orange section or the red section, what we are then, um, what, what is then happening is that children are being taken out of their home, out of the community, out of the school to receive those services. I do want to add that that is not to say that we will not authorize those services. If a child or adolescent requires either a community uh, residential rehabilitation or host home, 
a residential treatment facility, acute inpatient, acute partial, we will absolutely authorize those services as needed. However, we would like those services to be very short term and solution focused so that we can get the child back into their usual home, school, and community environment. CBH also partners with our evidence-based practice and intervention center, also known as EPIC. This, this department within the DBH IDS ensures that many of our providers throughout the Philadelphia area are providing evidence-based practices and treatment to our Philadelphia recipients. We want to ensure that our providers are aware and are trained in various evidence-based practices designed to target youth at particular age ranges. You can see on this slide, which is just a very brief synopsis, that we have evidence-based practices available from birth through five years old, um, very targeted services available for children two to eight, year old, eight years old, <laughs> and then services for youth five through 18 years old. If you go onto this website, you will be able to see all of these services. They will be, there will be a summary of the service delivery available, as well as the providers throughout the city that are able to uh, deliver that evidence-based practice. So this is an extremely helpful link for you to have and be aware of um, so that you can ensure that a youth or a family is getting the appropriate treatment that they re may require. CBH also um, has a collaboration with the PACS or Philadelphia Alliance for Child Trauma Services. The mission is to increase the number of children who receive the most effective trauma-specific and trauma-informed care in Philadelphia. We will do this by increasing the capacity of behavioral health, pediatric, and other child-serving agencies to offer evidence-based practices to youth and, and their families. PACS is a citywide trauma universal screening, education, prevention, and intervention program under the leadership of the Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services. You can see in this slide, we are just highlighting the schools that currently have STEP programming available in them. And there are 21 uh, district schools that have STEP teams available in the school. So now we want to talk about the goal of the IBHS procurement. So there are two change actions at play here. First, regarding the reason for changing to IBHS, as we discussed earlier in our earlier slides, um, there have been state and OMSAS regulations regarding um, IBHS services and what that delivery model needs to look like. Also, there has been cross-systems collaboration to procure IBHS with additional requirements for fall of 2020. So CBH, along with our cross systems partners, designed these services to ensure our children and families are getting the treatment that they need. Also, around the same time and previous to the state regulations changing, CBH had been um, organizing various focus groups with our partners, our children, our peers, our children, principals, 
um, and our providers. We have been gathering these various groups to target um, specific questions regarding what services were working really well and where we need to make some changes. I want to remind everyone that in May and June of 2019, principals met with Dr. Height, Dr. David Jones, through, who is the uh, commissioner for the DBH IDS, Karen Lynch, as well as Dr. Williams, who is our CBH chief office, clinical officer. And we brought these groups together to talk about, again, what services were being provided, where there were strengths in the services that were being provided, and where we needed to make some improvements. Our cross-systems collaboration to procure IBHS um, was worked through with CBH, the school district, the mayor's managing director's office, and the University of Penn. Again, this collaboration was to develop a mental health strategy that enhances behavioral health services for school age children. Again, I want to note that the strategy was developed and informed by feedback from youth, parents, school principals, and providers. We all wanted to ensure that there was access to high quality, evidence-based and culturally, linguistically competent mobile services for our children and families. We also wanted to ensure that we were utilizing a systems of care approach that is strengths-based and family-focused. What we learned from our stakeholder focus groups was the following. We learned that everyone wants to have strong communication and collaboration. We want to understand children and how to most effectively interact with and support them in our home, school, and community settings. We wanted to help children make progress and succeed, have positive, consistent, and supportive relationships between the adults and the children have integration in workflow and culture, promote a caring, supportive, relationship-centered environment, ensuring we are giving families a voice and helping them to participate in their child's treatment, and to help children and families access the support that they need. With that lens, we want to note that there are some really wonderful key enhancements regarding IBHS services. IBHS regulations allow for easier access. They allow for the provider to assess, treat, and stabilize a youth within the first 30 days of service. And there's increased requirements on the provider regarding credentialing, training, and supervision of staff. Another enhancement was a committed presence in a community. Cross-setting treatment from one provider, one provider who can service the child in their home, school, and provider. We also wanted to, we also want to note that this is a 12 month model. So services will be authorized on a basis of 12 months and will be assessed based on the child's need. Another enhancement was around school supports, access in all schools based on need, increased school integration and collaboration, and increased support to teachers around behavior management. Family engagement is another focus, enhancing social service supports and greater care coordination for families. And finally, a, a, another really great enhancement has been evidence-based practices being required for treatment, for teacher and parent consultation, and to assess social determinants of health. 
The state has also mandated an MOU or an, a memorandum of understanding regarding and shared between the provider and the school. To maximize this collaboration, the state has mandated this agreement be, be provided and signed. And the school district of, of Philadelphia requires this agreement be in the form of an MOU or again, memorandum of understanding. The MOU needs to include the following identification of the IBHS provider and school lead contacts, collaborative identification of appropriate space for the provider within the school, delineation and sharing of school and provider staff roles and responsibilities, a procedure for school to refer students regular collaboration and communication for referrals and progress monitoring, and a collaborative process for reviewing, revising, and updating the agreement, as well as managing concerns. Regarding the management of concerns, Concerns related to, to providers and school may arise as both parties work on aligning efforts. Regular meetings to discuss students or any other issues related to a youth or treatment will follow, follow, we'll follow this path for concerns. If unresolved, issues will be addressed via meetings with the school the provider, the school district prevention and intervention liaisons, as well as the school-based liaisons. For persistent and significant concerns, the school will notify the School District of Philadelphia Office of Prevention and Intervention of any provider-related concerns and the provider will notify CBH school-based team of any school-related concerns. The School District of Philadelphia's Office of Prevention and Intervention and the CBH school-based team will meet and collaborate with the providers and the schools to determine where we can, uh, where we can address the issue that has been brought to the attention of our respective offices. Our CBH school-based team will refer provider-related concerns to our CBH quality department to address via the quality assurance process. The School District of Philadelphia Office of Prevention and Intervention will refer any related concerns to the Deputy Chief Office of Student Rights and Responsibilities. And any final resolutions that will need to be discussed or resolved will be brought to our cross systems collaborative leadership meetings, which occur on a weekly basis. Again, this is just to ensure that CBH and the School District of Philadelphia Prevention and Intervention are working collaboratively and closely with our schools and providers to ensure that our children and youth are getting the services that they need. So during our collaboration with our various systems partners and our school district partners, we have all come up with a shared vision for outcomes. And what we, are, what we are looking to see is improvement in clinical symptoms. This will be monitored by CBH as evidenced by lower symptomatology scores on an evidence-based tool, such as CBITS. We are also looking for greater community tenure Again, this will be monitored by CBH as evidenced by decreased use of high acuity behavioral health services, such as crisis services, inpatient 
partial hospitalization or RTF. And again, I do want to stress that CBH would absolutely authorize those services if they are medically necessary. However, our goal will be to get children back to their environment, their home, and their school. And we want to enhance competency and self-efficacy for caregivers and school staff. So I'm going to turn it over to Lori now to talk about our procured services. So we're going to focus on how all of this is going to happen. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the overview of the scope of services. And this just gives a big picture overview of IBHS services and requirements. And I will go into some more detail below. Um, in terms of the scope of services, this includes um, several positions. One is uh, behavioral consultation services, also mobile therapy services, behavioral health technician services, care coordination services, and family peer specialist services. IBHS regulations has also increased requirements for provider staff credentialing, training, and supervision. And as Julia mentioned, CBH is requiring that providers use evidence-based practices for group therapy, for individual therapy, for teacher consultation, as well as for social determinants of health assessments. IBHS regulations allows for an easier process to get services and easier processes for services to begin sooner and along with that for a much more sophisticated clinical understanding of the child. So under IBHS, more people are qualified to start the process such as licensed clinical social workers um, and uh, licensed professional counselors and other licensed professionals that are credentialed through the state and they are now able to request uh, IBHS services with what is called a written order, which means that a full evaluation with a psychologist is not required. Of course, it can be done if clinically uh, needed. Um, also, there is an extended uh, assessment process which allows services to start immediately for doing a comprehensive assessment of the child's needs, to observe the child in real time, to see what teachers are seeing, to collect data, um, and to develop a much more robust uh, recommendation and treatment plan for the child. During that time, if um, uh, treatment and stabilization are needed, um, that also can happen. Um, so please do remember that we are bound by Medicaid regulations, which means that parents or legal guardians or a child, if that child is 14 or older, must still consent, must still sign to consent uh, for treatment. And the uh, child must also meet medical necessity criteria as stipulated by the state Medicaid. Okay, so let's start with looking at a mobile therapy. Um, the following slides will give you a very break, basic overview of the roles of the team and mobile therapists uh, conduct uh, individual and group therapy. They do treatment planning, they uh, do crisis stabilization, coordination of care and the other activities as you see are here on this slide. Behavior consultation is another master's prepared staff and similar to mobile therapy, they can provide individual and group therapy, treatment planning, uh, care coordination and other activities here. BHT, behavioral health technician, 
Now this is the position that was formerly known as TSS, Therapeutic Support Staff, or BHW, Behavioral Health Worker, that you may be familiar if you've had school therapeutic services in your school. But the BHT has enhancements. Uh, the BHT now um, can implement treatment plans, um, may provide evidence-based teacher and school staff cons consultation. Um, they will support skill, build skill building tailored to the needs of youth, um, as well as being required to take additional training as a registered behavior technician. All three of those positions, I should mention, um, may also provide evidence-based teacher consultation. So the care coordinator will spend considerable time assessing and evaluating the child and family's social determinants of health and providing them with supports to address any identified physical or behavioral health needs. So care coordinators should therefore have a very um, extensive knowledge of resources available in the community and help to link the family and the child with those resources. And they will also interface with any other systems that are supporting the child, such as DHS, CUA, juvenile justice, et cetera. The family peer specialist is somebody with the lived experience of receiving services for themselves and or for a child of theirs who can uh, work with the family um, to build relationships with the family, to help engage them with services, as well as empower the family to understand their role and to have a voice in their treatment and as needed to help link them to any natural supports. So these next few slides uh, give a brief overview of the evidence-based practices that we've mentioned earlier and within the three areas of support for therapy, for individual therapy, CBH is requiring providers to use um, cognitive behavioral therapy. And for group therapy, CBH is requiring uh, cognitive behavioral intervention for trauma in schools, or CBITS, or bounce back, which is the adaptation of CBITS for younger children. Um, Evidence-based practices for teacher consultation falls under the evidence-based model called BRIDGE, which stands for Bridging Mental Health and Education in Urban Schools. And finally, um, we are requiring um, that providers utilize uh, evidence-based assessment tools to determine physical and behavioral health needs and social service needs of the child and the family. So evidence-based practices for treatment, CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. To briefly summarize, CBT is for individual therapy to help a child learn new patterns of thinking and behaving. CBITS, or Cognitive Behavioral Intervention uh, for Trauma in Schools, and Bounce Back, as I mentioned, the adaptation for younger children involves group and individual therapy to relieve symptoms among children that are exposed to trauma. Um, both of these also include parent consultation sessions as well. We're very excited to be partnering with Penn uh, around um, building our provider capacity to implement uh, teacher consultation using an evidence-based protocol of bridge. So this is a very exciting enhancements um, that providers have not really done before. Um, specifically, they have consulted with teachers, but they have not specifically um, utilized an evidence-based protocol. Um, and this protocol helps um, staff provide coaching and consultation 
with teachers around strategies for both classroom interactions as well as for targeted student behaviors. Um, Bridge does require a two hour training, a two hour PD for teachers um, one time and then teachers can receive ongoing and flexibly delivered consultation from providers as needed. So as we are all very well aware, um, we have experienced an impact of COVID-19 on IBHS implementation, um, but with a lot of flexibility and efficiency and fluidity, um, we have come up with a model to support um, for the reopening um, in the virtual uh, schools and as well as for the evidence-based treatment training for providers. So basically our first year will include training all of our providers in the foundational training of cognitive behavioral therapy so that they can begin providing that level of service to children and families followed by um, two plus years um, of implementation and capacity building and in years two and on, we are training providers in cohorts, rotating through um, learning the evidence-based practices of bridge, CBITS, bounce back, as well as continuing the CBT training. In terms of um, transitioning services, we have created a mechanism to ensure that there will be seamless transition um, from any old providers to new providers and IB adjust to avoid any service lapses beginning in the school start of the school year. Um, I do want to point out that it is important to note that while we are making sure that the authorizations go through seamlessly. New providers um, are still bound by Medicaid regulations and must meet with legal guardians and the child to conduct an intake and to get treatment consent signed prior to them initiating any services. As intakes and consents are mandatory regulations. Um, new referrals and authorizations. So referrals can be made through the school's tier two and tier three meetings. Um, families can self-refer, students 14 years old and up can self-refer. And um, those referrals are submitted to the IBHS provider assigned to the school. Um, and authorization of services allows for immediate initiation of services, um, given and taken consent, of course, um, and services to be flexibly delivered. Um, and the state requires that IBHS services are prescribed as up to X number of hours. Um, so that does allow for flexibility of uh, providing services to meet the individual child's needs. Okay, so let's take a brief look at the infrastructure that we need to we needed to set up to support IBHS. Um, we have previously had STS programs on an average in about 90 or so schools. And now we are ensuring that all schools have access to services, which is quite a big enhancement. So we are looking at how we regionalize services um, to streamline those services and to scale them to need. So providers are regionalized to support principal feedback to streamline the number of providers at each school. Um, also for providers to have a committed presence in a community and a school um, that absolutely helps to build stronger relationships. It helps to scale services to meet the needs of that community, those children and the schools. And it 
also helps to um, improve collaboration and coordination of care. So we looked at Philadelphia in terms of three regions, which you can see here. They coincide with our children's mobile crisis regions. And because they're rather large, we then needed to uh, refine them by clusters. And clusters are made up of schools in close proximity to each other and with varying climate scores and varying enrollment numbers as shown here. And each cluster is assigned one provider. So scaling to need in schools, um, we had to also look at how to meet the needs across all schools. Um, University of Pennsylvania uh, conducted a study and found that there is a highly significant correlation between a school's climate score and um, behavioral health utilization in that school. And we needed a starting place. Um, and so we, we started with this, um, particularly because our data um, coincided and aligned in the same way with what University of Pennsylvania found. Um, so this is a starting place for determining provider presence in school buildings and providers should plan on having at a minimum a physical presence in schools as follows. For model climate scores, um, the provider would be in those schools to serve as children as needed. For schools with a reinforce uh, score in the climate tier, the providers um, will be there two days a week. Um, in watch schools, it would be four days a week. And for those schools with a climate score in the intervene tier, the provider should plan on being present in schools for five days a week. And I do want to say that, of course, any child, no matter what school they're in, that requires services and is authorized for services, those pro the provider will be in the school to service the child based on their needs. So while we say in a model school, the provider will be in the building as needed, if a particular child is authorized for 30 hours in that week, the provider who services that child will be in that school supporting that child. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, IBHS implementation and a few key points. Uh, we want to reiterate that um, each provider needs to service the child in the school as well as in the home and community in their clusters and coordinate and communicate across these settings. In terms of IBHS in school, there are some key elements for successful um, implementation. Uh, we want to highlight a few of these areas here. Um, it's important for providers to have a very strong collaboration and schools equally to collaborate very closely with providers, both in a planned as well as in a spontaneous way so that there's always open lines of communication and sharing of information, um, understanding each other's respective roles and functions. Um, it's also very important to have operational processes that support the work um, that include at a minimum, the provider meeting with the school leadership team or the tier two, three MTSS um, team meetings at a minimum on a monthly basis. We have found that in our schools that have had STS, um, it works much more effectively if the provider and school meet on a weekly basis. Um, we also know that we need to have appropriate space for the providers to conduct therapy. Um, and in the dedicate, in the watch and intervene schools, this should be a dedicated space 
and in the reinforce and model climate tiers, there should be a space that's available as needed, that's private, that's safe, that has a lock on the door, and that has ample space for individual and group therapy. And um, also important is to have a process for identifying and referring students to IBHS. Um, for students that receive IBHS to have time to go to therapy and for teachers to have time as needed to engage in bridge consultation and the PD. Um, also key is having an alignment between the school-based interventions and the behavioral health interventions. Um, and finally, all adults in a building providing consistent support um, with unified and consistent expectations of families and of removing barriers to both learning and treatment. Um, and providers in schools having a shared accountability to support the child in their natural setting um, within the classroom as much as possible. It really takes a team to help support the children and families. So in summary, IBHS is set up so that it is regionalized to have streamlining of providers down to a minimum um, of uh, one provider in a school building. I mean, hoping, hoping to have a maximum of one provider, but of course I must say that families do have a choice of what provider they would like to keep. And um, it also allows for, through regionalization, for scaling to need based on climate score, um, for requiring evidence-based practices, for both treatment as well as for school staff consultation. Um, it requires enhancement in partnerships and collaboration between the school and the provider that's supported by an MOU. And finally, um, through enhanced family engagement through a family peer specialist and care coordination via care coordinators. And Julia, I believe you'll pick up here. Thank you, Lori. So um, again, CBH wants to ensure that you are aware of the supports that are available through both CBH as well as the school district's Office of Prevention and Intervention. So regarding support, the Office of Prevention and Intervention will support increasing the understanding of IBHS with school administration and staff, will support implementation, integration, and problem solving within the schools. And the CBH school-based liaison team will support related to provider integration, problem solving and processes within schools, and clinical and access to care needs for our children and families. CBH will continue to have collaboration and ongoing training with our providers as well as our school district partners. And CBH has already um, completed principal and provider meet and greets for the 27 providers that are assigned to each cluster. And these meet and greets um, were just our initial attempt to introduce the school leadership to the provider that will be providing the services within their building. However, our under the understanding and um, you know certainly our intent is that the providers and the school leadership continue to meet, introduce each other's teams, and ensure that there is a partnership with strong communication and collaboration in order to ensure that the service delivery model is working for all of our children and families. 
Here are some helpful links that explain a little more in detail um, the services provided in our, through our continuum of care, the providers who are assigned to each school and cluster, as well as our CBH ABA providers. If you have any questions, please reach out to the prevention and intervention team and that the prevention and intervention team will reach out to CBH so that we can work together at answering any questions that you may have. Thank you for your time and attention and we look forward to our continued communication and collaboration. Thank you.